Hello everyone, I'm Anthony D'Souza and welcome to this series of videos on the exciting world of healthcare science. Uh, my name is Rachel Moss, I'm a transfusion practitioner at Great Ormond Street Hospital. That means I work between the laboratory and the wards. The laboratories test all the blood that comes through from the patients for uh, haemoglobin, white cells and platelets, how well it clots. And in the transfusion laboratory, we issue the blood and I work with them so that we just get the right blood for the right patient or get the right results for the right patient. The patient needs a blood test so that we can see what's going on. Patients need blood tests for a number of reasons, but what we'll often need to know is just how much haemoglobin they've got or whether their blood is clotting. So the doctor makes a decision to order the test. The test is then taken on the ward and comes to the lab. We then look at those results once we've analysed it and the results go back to the doctors. The doctors review that in conjunction with the patient and then makes a decision to transfuse. Patients may need a blood transfusion for a number of reasons, but the most common are you either aren't making it or you're losing it. If you aren't making it, it's because your bone marrow isn't working properly and not producing haemoglobin, not producing white cells, not producing uh, clotting factors, not producing platelets, or you're losing it because we're taking it out in bottles because you're really unwell and so far we need to put it in the lab or you're bleeding because you're bleeding through surgery or post-operatively or something like that. So they're the two main reasons you're not making it or you're losing it. So 15 year old Rachel wanted to be a nanny and then changed her mind and decided to be a children's nurse. Couldn't become a children's nurse because in those days you became an adult nurse and then specialised. I became an adult nurse but did a small stint on children's ward and decided I really didn't want to work in a children's hospital after all. So I became an adult nurse and became an ICU sister, although I wasn't going to work in ICU and ended up spending many, many years working in ICU. And then a job came up 18 years ago, this job in another hospital. And I went for that and then I came to Great Ormond Street. So I've been 18 years now as a transfusion practitioner, but it was a clinical background in really intensive care medicine that got me here with that experience to build on. So it's, it's an interesting one because the labs often feel slightly removed from the clinical area. And so one of the important parts of my job is to really be a bridge or a conduit between the two and break down that both sometimes physical wall but metaphorical wall that the labs and the clinical areas don't meet. And so the, a huge part of the transfusion practitioner role is bringing the clinical side to the labs so they see that side but also bringing the laboratory side to the clinicians so they understand how things work. So it's a very fluid role between the two and I think that's what makes it so important because it really helps both sides understand each other. So we've done two things. We'll bring the nurses through the laboratory so that they get to see the analyzers, they get to see the blood transfusion lab. And it really helps them understand when they make a phone call why things might take an hour to get ready or why it might take us two hours to get the platelets ready. But the other way is for the scientists to understand what happens on the ward. So I took them to I take them to CICU, they can see the patients who are perhaps on ECMO, how much equipment is around, how much blood they need, why they need. I've also taken them to theatre, they can see that there isn't actually a phone in theatre, you need somebody to carry a phone and then they look through the door and they can see what's going on. So it gives them a picture of what a theatre looks like or an intensive care patient. The blood samples are taken from patients for a number of reasons, but what we want to do is see what's going on and the only way to see what's going on is to get a bit of that blood, take it to the lab and analyse it. So the decision to take any sample is done by the doctors and they're ordered for the patient and the patient is bled from a nurse or a doctor or a phlebotomist. The sample arrives in the lab and it's then booked in. And we book it into our laboratory information management system known as the LIMS. And once it's on the LIMS, that sample then starts a journey. So we see the journey for the full blood counts that it comes from being booked in and goes onto a rotator. And the rotator rotates it for about two minutes. The idea is to just mix the blood. Sometimes it's sitting for a couple of hours on a ward before it's picked up and brought down to us or maybe sat in a porter's box while he walks from the top of the hospital to the bottom. So it just makes that the blood is well mixed. Then we'll add it onto the rack. The rack is put into the analyzer and the analyzer picks up each sample so that it can process it, review it and do the count. This takes about two minutes. Once the sample's been processed, the results go across to the computer. And the biomedical scientist will look at a batch of results. From a clotting screen, we put it on the centrifuge and the centrifuge then separates the plasma and the red cells 
For a clotting screen, we want to know if the patient's blood is clotting. So by that, that's why we have the plasma. And again, it goes on the analyzer. Again, it takes about two to three minutes to run the test. And then again, we look at them as a batch. So there's similarities between running a clotting screen and a full blood count in terms of what the biomedical scientist does. So once we've got those results, often they'll make a decision to treat. And a decision to treat in terms of blood transfusion is a decision to transfuse. We're looking at a low hemoglobin, would need a blood transfusion. Low platelet count would need a platelet transfusion, or it may well be that we have a patient who's bleeding and needs a plasma transfusion. Once we've issued the blood, it needs to be collected. We really need to make sure we get the right blood for the right patient. We check that by using the analyzer in the blood transfusion laboratory and checking the patient's blood group and making sure we have the right one because they'll always have at least two blood groups on the system before we will transfuse them. This is a patient safety mechanism. And when the blood gets to the ward, we scan it on the ward and we scan it against the patient. Every stage of this process is right patient, right blood and knowing where the blood is and who's doing what with it. So that from the point we take the first full blood count and we check those results to the point of the patient receiving the transfusion, it's all about patient safety.